Few games have promised and then delivered as much mayhem as Borderlands, the loot em up from Gearbox Software. With the spin off of the series on the horizon, with Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, we decided it was time to take a look back. So here's the history of Borderlands. In 2007, Gearbox Software had some interesting projects in the works. They were in pre production on a game based on the movie Aliens. I wonder what happened to that one and were apparently in talks with director Michael Mann to make a heat game. Brother, you are going down. The team was also deep in production on another title, a hybrid first-person shooter and role-playing game called Borderlands. The team were familiar with making first-person shooters after working on expansions for Half-Life as well as the PC port of Halo Combat Evolved but wanted to combine their knowledge of making first-person shooter games with their love of loot grinding in titles like Diablo to create a shooter that would have loot coming out of every orifice. The game was revealed via the September 2007 Game Informer cover, and even during this first look, the ambition was clear. The game was built for co-op in mind from the start, with players taking control of one of the three playable characters, Roland, Mordecai, and Lilith and playing solo, with AI, or with up to three others online or in split-screen co-op. There were vehicles to drive around the expansive wastes of the planet Pandora, numerous skills to unlock, and to scratch that looting itch, Gearbox boasted over 500,000 unique weapons which would be procedurally generated for players. We've created an AI system that actually develops our weapons for us. Mm -hmm. And as a result, there's millions of guns in the game. There's more weapons in Borderlands than in every shooter on the 360 and every shooter on the PlayStation 3 added together. Oh, yeah. While the Game Informer article offered a few images of the game, the first trailer wouldn't arrive until almost a year later at E3 2008. And compared to the wacky, colorful Borderlands we know today, the Borderlands of 2008 was, dare I say it, a little generic looking. I'll tell you the same thing I told all those who came before you. It doesn't exist. And it seemed that Gearbox knew it too. Testers kept comparing the game to id Software's Rage and the recently released Fallout 3, and there was a clashing of themes. The gameplay was ridiculous and over the top, but the visuals suggested gritty realism. The team was 75% of the way through the project and didn't have the money to reboot it, so they switched up the art style to look more like ink-lined comic books and scrapped the quote boring abilities from the skill trees, emphasizing the wackier ones. The new art style was a hit, but an awful lot of work to implement, so Gearbox employees from other games started helping out on Borderlands in their spare time. Borderlands launched in October 2009, shoulder to shoulder with juggernauts like Uncharted 2, Halo 3 ODST, and Modern Warfare 2. But it was a surprise hit, with Xbox 360 copies even selling out in many stores on the east coast of the US. Praise was heaped upon its gameplay, which was at its best when players grouped up to play together, with players finding the loop of shooting enemies, gathering loot, and leveling up intensely satisfying. There was always another enemy to shoot, another gun to get, and another skill to unlock. Each of the now four Vault Hunters offered their own unique powers, and the game would sing when played together with friends in co-op. Death didn't necessarily mean the end, either. If you were downed in battle, killing another enemy would give you a second wind, pushing you back into the fight. The new art style worked in its favor, making the expansive world of Pandora visually appealing and more in line with the game's over-the-top nature. Less positively received was the game's story, which was described as thin in our review. Players would take control of one of the Vault Hunters, who would scour Pandora, an almost barren planet that had been picked over by one of the universe's many corporations to find key fragments that, when combined, would unlock a vault full of untold riches. Helping you out on your quest is... Claptrap. You may call me by my locally designated name, Claptrap. An excitable robot who would unfortunately go on to become the mascot for the series. <laughs> Seriously? Your arm's tired? I played the f***ing Duke of Buckingham and Richard III with Ian McKelly, ass This is f***ing Bush League. Borderlands received four pieces of downloadable content, and while they offered the usual, new missions, areas, weapons, and enemies, they also acted as a testbed for the developers to try out new ideas. Borderlands sold 2 million copies in just two months, 
high numbers for a new IP, pushing its way to market during the busiest time of year. And while a sequel was a no-brainer according to Gearbox, it took them a few years to actually announce it. In August 2011, publisher 2K and Gearbox officially revealed Borderlands 2, and while initial details were scant, Gearbox promised that the sequel would be bigger and better than the first game, offering new character classes, weapons, enemies, and areas to explore, as well as an ambitiously crafted story. At Gamescom that year, Gearbox offered a glimpse of what that meant. The game's weapon system had been replaced, the AI had been improved, more voice acting had been added, and the quest and vehicle systems had been overhauled. The story had been heavily criticized in the first game, so in order to create a better connection between the gameplay of Borderlands and its story, the lead designer and the lead writer worked more closely together for Borderlands 2. The goal was to make a story so ridiculous that it would be beyond criticism, something to fit the nature of the gameplay itself. One of the biggest changes came with the cast of playable characters. The four original Vault Hunters were replaced with Axton, Maya, Salvador, and Zero, with two more launching later as DLC. But that didn't mean the end of the original Vault Hunters. They returned as NPCs and quest givers in the game, a nice nod for those who got attached while playing Borderlands 1. The new and old heroes were teaming up against Handsome Jack, the charming president of the nefarious Hyperion Corporation, who brings his forces to Pandora, hoping to open another vault on the planet. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's cute that y'all think you're the heroes of this little adventure, but you're not. Gearbox promised a bigger, better sequel, and boy did they deliver. Fans loved exploring the more expansive, exciting world of Pandora and all of the new opportunities for mayhem it presented. Reviewers praised the writing, in particular new characters like Tiny Tina, but more about her in a bit. The stalker thought was all in fun. Ah! But Borderlands 2 wasn't without its controversies. The developers caught flack for referring to the Mechromancer's skill tree as the girlfriend mode for lesser skilled players, with its actual name becoming Best Friends Forever. In the UK, Borderlands 2 was the most pre-ordered 2K game ever, and by 2014 it became the highest selling 2K game in history, selling well over 12 million copies by 2015. It came as no surprise then that Hollywood came knocking with Lionsgate announcing a film of the series in 2016. While it still hasn't been released as of early 2022, huge names like Jamie Lee Curtis, Kate Blanchett, and Jack Black are attached to Star. Borderlands 2 had a number of pieces of downloadable content, including new Vault Hunters Gage the Mechromancer and Krieg the Psycho. 2013's Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep was a vast departure from the story of the Vault Hunters, where Tina ran a tabletop game of bunkers and badasses, the Pandora take on Dungeons and Dragons, and the Vault Hunters would gather as a party to rescue Butt Stallion from the evil Handsome Sorcerer. The pack was well received, later being released as a standalone one-shot in 2021 and serving as the inspiration for the spin-off game Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. After the release of the wildly successful Borderlands 2, Gearbox began working with 2K Australia to make a prequel that would bridge the story and explain how Handsome Jack rose to power in the first place. The majority of production was conducted by 2K Australia, but certain key team members like the writers of Borderlands 2 worked with them to craft the game. In this new title, Hyperion employee Jack finds clues to a vault on a moon of Pandora, and hires four vault hunters to crack it open for him. The four playable characters had all appeared in previous games in one way or another, either as bosses or NPCs, including series mascot Claptrap. Pre-sequel offered a few tweaks to the known Borderlands formula, like adding new weapon types, vehicles like the hovercraft, as well as low gravity areas and the need to use O2 canisters for air, which would let you double jump when you had them equipped. Pre-sequel didn't set the world on fire, with reviewers criticizing the story and some repetition in the late game. It was initially released for the PS3, Xbox 360 and PC, and was later brought to PS4, Xbox One and PC as part of the Handsome Collection, bundled with Borderlands 2. 2K Australia was sadly shuttered in 2015, a few months after the game's launch. I want you to know the promotion that you worked so hard to get. That's still coming to you. That's why I'm gonna make you assistant vice janitor.
In 2014, Telltale Games began to release Tales from the Borderlands, an episodic adventure game set in the Borderlands universe. The project came about when Gearbox and Telltale were sitting at neighbouring tables at the Spike Video Game Awards in 2012. The two companies got to chatting and over a few drinks, the idea to set a Telltale game in the Borderlands universe came up. While Tales from the Borderlands did have some action in it, it was a far cry from the bombastic mayhem of the main series. Well, that didn't stop you, did it? At least the money was real. However, fans still praised the story, its two protagonists, Reese and Fiona, as well as the choice-driven gameplay. When Telltale Games closed in 2018, the five episodes were pulled from sale until 2K managed to obtain the rights and re-released the series almost three years later. After the release of Borderlands 1 and 2, Gearbox was a little tired of the series and so shifted its sights onto different projects, including Battleborn, a hero shooter meets MOBA. Battleborn was not a success, partly because it received middling reviews and partly because Blizzard released its own hero shooter Overwatch just a few weeks later. Battleborn eventually closed down, but it turned out the experience working on something new was just what the team at Gearbox needed. As is the Gearbox way, the team wanted to go bigger and better with the third installment. No longer just centered on the planet Pandora, Borderlands 3 allowed players, via their ship Sanctuary 3, to traverse the galaxy to find vaults that were hidden on other planets before the children of the vault could. After Handsome Jack's defeat in Borderlands 2, a new power had risen in the form of a cult loosely inspired by streamer culture, with its two leaders looking to grab the vaults for themselves. Like with previous titles, Borderlands 3 offered procedurally generated loot and promised over 1 billion guns for players to potentially find. Co-op also received some tweaks. Thanks to the level syncing system, everyone could play together regardless of their level and each would be matched by level appropriate enemies. And for those who hate squabbling over loot, you could set your game so that each player would receive level appropriate drops. Borderlands 3 released in September 2019 and received two season passes worth of content, including game packs, new skill trees, and a new game mode, which was basically a type of Borderlands Battle Royale. Thanks to an exclusivity deal with the Epic Game Store, it was exclusive to their storefront on PC for six months, leading to other games in the series being review bombed on Steam. That is a deal breaker, but not for me! Borderlands 3 was eagerly anticipated, and the game even had a crossover with Fortnite. It reviewed really well, with reviewers praising the fact that it expanded the Borderlands gameplay formula and offered payoffs for story beats that fans had been following for a decade. As of the end of 2019, Borderlands 3 has sold over 8 million copies, and its success helped the franchise hit over a billion dollars. Which brings us to Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, which once again sees Tina in the role of Bunker Master as she guides you and your party through an epic high fantasy adventure. There's one alone who can wield fate, one alone whose story is in their own hands, the Fate Maker. That's you. Instead of choosing from a pre-made Vault Hunter, the game allows you to create your own character and mix and match your skills. Not only can you use guns in the game, but now you can use melee weapons like swords, as well as magic to fend off the hordes of enemies you'll be up against. The majority of the game is in first person, but when traversing the overworld, your characters turn into cute tabletop miniature versions of themselves. It also features a pretty high-profile cast, including Andy Samberg, and Will Arnett. I am Valentine, gallant adventurer. The scary stabby one is Fred. Which was your favorite Borderlands game? Let us know in the comments and make sure to subscribe to GameSpot for more on Tiny Tina's Wonderlands coming your way very soon. Thanks for watching.